First, congratulations on such a fine body of work with the artwork. Thanks. And, you know, in terms of the record, you wanted it to be more accurate, you know, sort of like more honest with accurate realizations of the sounds in your heart. How yeah. gratifying was it to take this approach? Very gratifying. Um, I think that... Um, like, liturgy has always been kind of misunderstood because it's been seen as a black metal band, which it, which it is in a way. But um, I... Uh, like, there's, there's just been a lot of, um, like, discontinuity between my intentions for the music and, like, the reception of it. Like, sort of, like, people's expectations of it. And I think that this record, um, like, represents more adequately, like, what the music is supposed to be, in a way. Um, and it's kind of weird to do that, because, uh... Like I think the music kind of confuses people a little bit, mm -hmm. but and yeah, I mean, I mean, it's very, it's, it's very gratifying to like follow through with like you know what, what you want to do. You know, overall, I mean, there's more arrangements, the layering of styles. You got punk, metal, um, glitch, electronics, horns, bells. You know, how challenging was it for you to kind of mold all these compositions? And you know, was that again, was that something that was was it an organic approach, or did you have yeah, that in mind? It, it was hard. I mean, it, it took a long time because it's because I mean. I really didn't want to like <clears throat> make some kind of just like wacky eclectic album with like you know a little mix of this and a little mix of that and like um, some kind of like postmodern hodgepodge. You know, I wanted to like make something that drew from everything I love, but was its own thing um, yeah. and like coheres and um, that. Yeah, it takes a lot of like simmering to get things to. Uh, like resonate I, like I don't like thinking of it so much as an eclectic album um, like th there's been a lot of emphasis on all the different styles that go into it which is kind of cool but I, I think that I, I almost regret allowing that to happen like I, I, I'd almost prefer just for the record just to like I would have loved to just re-release it and just be like yeah here's this record like I'm not going to tell you what the influences are just you know, see what you think um, yeah because because I think it's kind of its own thing, you know? <laughs> In regards to the artwork, I mean, each song has its own rule. I mean, and uh, well, I understand that was important to you when you were sequencing the record. Is it key to give each song an individual identity? I wanted them to all be different from one another in a kind of fundamental way, but also cohere as a whole. And... That's, that's less and less common these days, you know? Like, albums that kind of like an organic unity from start to finish and it's kind of a lost cause like I don't know there's no great reason to do it unless you like want to I wanted to get your views on Quetzalcoatl I mean it's just a, such a well arranged song and such a you know the pace the arrangements the tones yeah. you know how do you go about arranging and from a compositional sense how do you go about arranging such a diverse song I mean this record that song in particular you know, I usually start out jamming on a keyboard or a guitar or both, or like programming um, MIDI notes, and I usually have a demo that's just keyboard or just guitar, and then I just kind of arrange from there and experiment with different MIDI instruments and different like techniques for resampling and stuff. Um, I mean, Quetzalcoatl isn't you know, it's certainly not the most complicated song on the record. Like, there's others that have a lot more moving parts that were, like, more of, like, a detailed, like, you know, intricate creation. But, um, I remember, like, I get the call, like, at, at the time, I had just gotten really into, like, hard style and, like, like kind of, like, Northern European hardcore techno and this, like, gabber kick sound, and I wanted to bring that into a track. And, uh, yeah, just, just kind of develop from there. I wanted to also get your views on Vitriol. I mean, with mm -hmm. a song like Vitriol, what are the origins of this song? Um, Vitriol, it's, it's funny, I, I forgot that there was, there's actually like a SoundCloud link to <coughs> like an early version of Vitriol from like four years ago or something uh, under the name Kelval Hall. Like for a while I had like a solo moniker named Kelval Hall and, yeah. I, and I did a couple of like kind of drone slash rap shows. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, like I've, I've spent a lot of time making like trap beats and things like that, and I wanted to like this this line between metal and rap, which is so uh, uh, like such a like tacky uh, line to cross. I was really interested in like like I. Um, I think there are a lot of people who really love both of those styles of music and there's just like no tasteful way to like make them work together and I, and I really wanted to try and like take that as a challenge and uh, like find a way to combine black metal and rap. And so, and so, so, so like that, that affected the vocal style on the record throughout the record. And then and Vitriol is very much like you know, a rap song, um, although, although some people don't listen to it that way. Your vocals on this record and you're yeah. singing a lot faster and you had to think a lot more about the rhythms. What was that like for you as a challenge in itself? It was a big challenge. I mean, I don't have a very good voice, you know, like for starters. And, uh, you know, I knew I was through with screaming. Like I knew that, that I wanted to take away that black metal signifier. You know, and also I was just tired of the way it makes my throat feel. And I wanted to communicate more, because um, the lyrics are pretty important in liturgy, and I've never, like, people don't usually get to hear them. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it just took some practice. You know, the idea was, like, to not make the move of going from s screaming to, like, be a metal band that sings, because I, like, like over or something like that, you know, like, like I, I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with that kind of move, but I thought that if I could hone in on this style that is kind of between like medieval psalm note singing yeah. and this style of, you know, kind of Bone Thugs and Harmony, P6 Mafia rapping that I've just like always loved so much and which there's a lot of now, again, in a way, um, that, it would be cool, and like, like it's, it's, it's the most, um, it's, maybe it's the weirdest part of the record. Like, I, I think it's, I don't know, it's weird. Like, a lot of people didn't think it was a very good idea to try to do, but I, I'm, 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 I'm happy with it. When you guys perform live, it's where you guys really come to the fore, and you guys are so electric and such a pulsating atmosphere. Yeah. How do you feel your live shows have evolved over the years? Well, I mean, originally the live show was just me solo, and for for a couple of years I did like these drone, kind of droning, like loop chanting, loop guitar, a lot of the riffs that ended up on the first record, Reannihilation, and I did some touring with that and all that. And uh, um, when I approached these other guys about joining the band to kind of turn the music into a more like song oriented reality um, it, yeah, it clicked pretty quickly mm -hmm. and uh, yeah I, I, I love I love playing with these guys in this band it's really like um, it's, yeah it's, 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 it's just, yeah. just powerful and you know Hunter I wanted to get uh, your views on a few of the tweets that you guys have put up I mean there's okay. always some compelling tweets on yeah. your account I mean here's one my two <coughs> favorite words are lofty and brainy Oh. Oh yeah. Um, I I don't like the way that uh, the band is characterized in the media very much, and uh, and I, yeah, this idea that like liturgy is like a brainy, <laughs> a brainy band. I I think like there was a like a piece in Pitchfork that described us as like known as being a brainy band. And it's like, it's just so the opposite of that. Like, it, it's the most like visceral, emotional, like heartfelt music. I don't, I don't, it's not the most, but it, it's very visceral and emotional and heartfelt music. And like, it's not some like, you know, guy typing on a keyboard or something like that. And uh, so that, that was a sarcastic comment. Oh, oh yeah, and lofty. Yeah, it's just like disrespectful. Like that, you know, it's like you sort of, it's so easy to make fun of ambition by calling it lofty, and, yeah. and, and it's, it's an ambitious project. You put up a tweet, Tool is still so good. Yeah, I love Tool. I would love to tour with Tool. That, that would be my number one, like, if I could, like, tour with a band, it would be Tool. Um, 
there, yeah. That the someone was, what was it? It was at the London show that like the sound guy there played like all of Tool's albums between the time that we arrived wow. and the time that we um, went on stage, and I was just like. I was just aware that I like had like every note memorized on all those records. And it's like, oh. yeah, tool's good. Overall, what brings a restored and enlightened feel to your life? Um, creating really restores me, and um, I don't know. I mean, other stuff that doesn't have to do with music at all. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I appreciate, you know connecting with people through music but in a way what's most restorative is my relationships to like my girlfriend and my family and you know like that's that's in a way the most important stuff is like the people who are right around me and who I can like support and take care of.